Hello friends and welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be learning about the bones of the vertebral column. Now before I start with the explanation of the lumbar vertebrae with the specimens, please note that these holes right here in the middle of the body of the vertebrae are not a part of a true vertebrae. Since they are artificial bones, they are seen right here. Now let's learn about the lumbar vertebrae. The lumbar vertebrae are five in number. The first four are typical lumbar vertebrae, while the fifth one is the atypical lumbar Basically, vertebrae. Basically, a lumbar vertebrae is identified by its large size, the absence of coastal facets, and the absence of transverse foramen on its transverse process. Now let's look at the features of a typical lumbar vertebrae. The body is large and kidney shaped. It is wider from side to side than from before backwards. The height of the body is slightly greater anteriorly than posteriorly. The difference contributes to the forward convexity of the lumbar spine. The vertebral foramen is triangular in shape and is larger than in the thoracic region but is smaller than that in the cervical region. The pedicles are short and strong. The laminae are short, thick and broad. They are directed backwards and medially that is towards the center to complete the vertebral foramen posteriorly. The spine or the spinous process forms a vertical quadrilateral plate directed almost backwards and only slightly downwards. It is thickened along its posterior and inferior borders. The transverse processes are thin and tapering and are directed laterally and slightly backwards. These develop from the coastal element and are homologous with the ribs in the thoracic region. The postero-inferior aspect of the root of each transverse process is marked by a small rough elevation, the accessory process, which represents the true transverse process of the vertebra as it develops from the transverse element of the vertebra right here. The length of the transverse processes increases from vertebra L1 to L3 and thereafter it decreases. The superior articular processes lie far apart from the inferior articular processes. Each process bears a concave facet which faces medially and backwards right here. The posterior border is marked by a rough elevation called the mammillary process, as you can see right here. The inferior articular processes lie nearer to each other than the superior articular processes. Each process bears a convex facet facing laterally and forwards. These are the two facets, this and this. Now let's look at the fifth lumbar vertebrae. This is the atypical lumbar vertebrae. There are three most important distinguishing features of this vertebrae. Firstly, the transverse processes are thick, short and pyramidal in shape. As you can see, they are pyramidal in shape. Secondly, the distance between the inferior articular process, as you can see right here, is larger than or equal to the distance between the superior articular processes. Thirdly, the spine is small, short and rounded at the tip. Other features of the fifth lumbar vertebrae are that the body is the largest of all lumbar vertebrae. The anterior surface of the body of the vertebrae is more extensive than the posterior surface. This difference is responsible for the creation of the sharp lumbosacral angle or the sacrovertebral angle and is 120 degree in an adult. Now let's look at the attachments of a lumbar vertebrae. The upper border and the lower border of the front and the back respectively give attachment to the anterior longitudinal ligament and the posterior longitudinal ligament. This is the anterior longitudinal ligament. This is the posterior longitudinal ligament. Lateral to the anterior longitudinal ligament, the right cross of the diaphragm is attached to the upper three vertebrae 
while the left cruz of the diaphragm is attached to the upper two vertebrae. This is the right cruz of the diaphragm. Behind the line of crura, the upper and lower borders of all the lumbar vertebrae give origin to the psoas major muscle. This is the psoas major muscle. The spine provides attachment to the posterior layer of the lumbar fascia, the interspinous and supraspinous ligaments and also it gives origin to the erector spinae, the multifidus and the interspinous muscles. Let's look at the attachments on the transverse process. The tips of the transverse process gives attachment to the middle layer of the lumbar fascia. In addition, the tip of the first process gives attachment to the medial and lateral arcuate ligaments and the tip of the fifth process gives attachment to the iliolumbar ligament. The faint vertical ridge on the anterior surface of each transverse process gives attachment to the anterior layer of the lumbar fascia. Medial to the ridge, the anterior surface gives origin to the psoas major and lateral to the ridge, it gives origin to the quadratus lumborum. This is the quadratus lumborum. The posterior surface is covered by the deep muscles of the back and gives origin to the fibers of the longissimus thoracis that is a part of the erector spinae. The accessory process right here and right here gives origin to the medial intertransverse muscles. This is the longissimus thoracis. The upper borders and the lower borders gives origin to the lateral intertransverse muscles. The mammillary process right here gives attachment to the multifidus and to the medial intertransverse muscles. Now let's look at an easy way to remember the attachments on the lumbar vertebrae. I have made four different mnemonics for the four different parts of the lumbar vertebrae. That is the body, spine, transverse process and articular process. The mnemonic for the body is anterior and posterior parts of tall cross. For the spine, we have semi pi. Transverse process, we have Queen Linda found the long Indian so part interesting. For the articular process, we have two words MM. Please note that the green color indicates the attachments of ligaments. The red color indicates the origin of muscles. Let's look at the first mnemonic that is anterior and posterior parts of tall cross. Anterior stands for the attachment of the anterior longitudinal ligament. Posterior stands for the attachment of the posterior longitudinal ligament. Part stands for the origin of psoas major. Tall stands for the attachment of tendinous arches as the T here is the same. Cross stands for the origin of the right cross of the diaphragm. Moving on to the next mnemonic, we have semi pi. The S stands for the supraspinous ligament. E for the origin of erector spinae, M for the origin of multifidus, I for the attachment of interspinous ligament. Then P for the attachment of the posterior layer of the lumbar fascia, I for the origin of interspinous muscles. Now moving on to the next mnemonic that is Queen Linda found the long Indian so part interesting. We have Queen which stands for the origin of quadratus lumborum muscle, Linda for the origin of lumbar fascia, Long for the origin of longissimus thoracis, Indian for the origin of intertransverse muscles, Soap for the origin of psoas major, Art for the attachment of the arcuate ligaments, Interesting for the attachment of the iliolumbar ligament. Finally, moving on to the last mnemonic for the articular process, we have MM. M stands for the origin of multifidus and the other M stands for the origin of the medial intertransverse muscles. I hope you found this video helpful. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.